What's good, people? We back. Um, this is about to be a very interesting video. This one's called Psychopath versus Sociopath and how to spot the difference and why you need to know this. I do need to know this. Um, sometimes I can honestly tell regardless because it's just based off the vibe I get from someone. Um, I can sense energy. But with Psychopath and Sociopath, I'm going to only explain my, my verbal difference between the two. Psychopath is literally what's going on mentally, and then sociopath is literally what's what's being said. But at the same time, they have they kind of have similarities. But I want to see what the real difference is for. Them. After our favorite murder documentary was over, my friends and I sat on the couch, taking in all that had happened. Before one friend blurted out, "He was clearly a psychopath." No, he was a sociopath. Another friend offered. The argument between the two went on for some time before they looked at me to bring this to an end. Having been trained in psychiatric conditions in med school, I was the bona fide expert in the group. Of course, I had heard people use the two terms interchangeably, but I never really stopped to think about how to differentiate them. Do you find yourself wondering what the difference between a psychopath and a sociopath really is? Not really, but I do want to know. Welcome to our channel, where we talk about issues relating to mental health, self-improvement, general medical problems, and the journey to overall wellness. We put out weekly videos on these topics, and our content is based on scientific research and our experience as physicians practicing both Western and Eastern medicine. If this is something that appeals to you, be sure to like this video and stick till the very end Social to see support if this to is your something boy. you want to subscribe to. Without further ado, let's head straight into the main topic of today's video, psychopaths and sociopaths. Oh, let's check Psychopathy. It out. When do we say a person is a psychopath? According to Oxford Learner's Dictionary, a psychopath is a person who has a serious personality disorder that involves not caring about other people's feelings, not feeling sorry when they have done something bad, and wanting to be violent or cruel to others. Interesting. Okay. I, I do know a good amount of people who actually really just don't care. Like, they claim they care, but they really don't care. Are psychopaths born? Well, I know yeah. that you have heard of this famous well, no. saying that psychopaths are born. They're not born. Indeed, psychopathy has been associated with genetic predispositions. Oh. In psychopathy, the amygdala, a part of the brain that controls how a person responds to potentially harmful or scary situations, is thought to be dysfunctional. Mm. This is clearly shown when psychopaths are watching murder and bloody scenes. Instead of being uncomfortable and disturbed by everything, they are, in fact, calm and may even laugh at the scene. Yikes. This area of the brain also aids in controlling emotions. Psychopaths have been found to have modifications to the structure and operation of specific brain regions, That's weird. including the prefrontal cortex, temporal cortex, and paralimbic structures, which function at a lower level. That's weird. Sometimes... This causes them to experience odor-related issues. Their ability to distinguish between various odors declines, with increasing psychopathy scores on the standard tests. Yeah, that's like ecstasy to However, them. the environment is thought to contribute as well to some extent. How to spot psychopathy in children. Children who exhibit callous, unemotional traits, lack of empathy and guilt, shallow emotions, are more likely to grow up to be psychopaths. Hmm. These kids tend to engage in aggressive and antisocial behavior, Bullies. such as bullying. They are also less likely to recognize a frightening look and are less likely to react to socially rewarding stimuli. Like you know what I think? Because they ain't got their ass whooped before. You know what? Man, it's either, it's either their parents ain't whooping on them enough or they got bullies that bully them. Since they want to bully others. Nah, forget that. I don't care about what's happening at home. If y'all think y'all enjoy that, enjoy getting you orange whoop. Pleasant expressions. Teenagers that exhibit early traits of psychopathy, like lack of empathy, may also be diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. They are also less likely to make lifelong friends, since they cannot find delight in these bonds. Social relationships. Psychopaths are typically unable to establish true emotional connections with others. They tend to form superficial bonds that they later use to their benefit. And despite the obvious harm they cause, psychopaths never regret their actions. 
Sheesh. They typically create a symbiotic or parasitic connections and can be almost compulsively ordered while maintaining the appearance of normalcy in their social <coughs> interactions. That's crazy. So what really makes these people enjoy manipulating others? It turns out that dopamine, a chemical that awakens our brain's reward centers, is overproduced and overvalued in the brains of psychopaths. Mm. Why do psychopaths think that influencing others will make them feel good? Their dopamine receptors go into overdrive, providing them with motivation and considerably enhancing their desire to get their own way. Their life in crime. When mm. committing crimes, psychopaths typically do so in a method that poses the least risk to themselves. They will meticulously plan their offenses to avoid detection and have backup plans ready for any eventuality. Due to their inability to empathize, psychopaths do not experience regret for their behavior. Psychopaths are prevalent among serial killers. Career paths. According to a 2013 Oxford scholar, Kevin Dutton's study, some occupations draw psychopaths. They arrive in large numbers to fill open positions as police officers, attorneys, and doctors. Huh? 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 I don't believe that. I would have thought they were like in physical sports like UFC or fighting or something. CEO is the most noteworthy occupation for a psychopath. They love their occupations and make an effort to win others' respect and trust. This is due to the fact that while not being able to feel them, they are highly adept at mimicking human social emotions. Thanks to this, they can masterfully manipulate people's behaviors. Yikes. Highly positive attitude. An interesting fact about these people is that psychopaths typically provide 100% effort since they are so motivated by rewards they have a very strong positive attitude. Instead of concentrating on the potential downside, they emphasize on the potential upside, which drives them to... Ex so, okay, I know this is strictly uh, talking about psychopath, but if that's the case, I am a psychopath because I do have a highly positive attitude. Even though some of these ones I don't agree with, but I do understand why they're saying it. But if that's the case, then it sounds like that's what I am, but I'm not. More effort because they only perceive the benefit. If things don't work out their way, they may go to extremes. I don't Short do that concentration though. Span. I don't do that. One of the less well-known characteristics of a psychopath is a short attention span, which can manifest in ways that are comparable to ADD or ADHD, ADHD. symptoms. Yeah. Psychopaths are constantly searching for more exciting or amusing things to do or see since they are easily bored with mundane activities, tasks, and people. They may also experience a sudden loss of interest in objectives, undertakings, or connections that had previously been highly essential to them. This may also be related to a history of making careless decisions or quitting commitments or initiatives before they are completed. Mm. Twisted Minds Psychopaths frequently have abnormal thoughts because of the way their brains are wired. As a result, they might say or see things that are weird, strange, or off-putting in casual interactions. A psychopath may also occasionally give a startling glimpse into their surprising minds when they discuss odd things they enjoy, make hurtful remarks about other people, or make it apparent that they don't care about other people. X. Compulsive liars. Pathological lying is a trait that many psychopaths exhibit. They could embellish the truth to forward their agenda, boost their ego, or influence others to think, feel, or act in a certain manner. The majority of people with normal emotions experience remorse or at least some level of concern when they lie. But for psychopaths, lying is guiltless due to the lack of conscience. Deception is indeed a recognized symptom of psychopathy, and it can even manifest as someone faking regret. I know a lot of psych I know a lot of pathological liars, bro. These jokers are evil. Empathy or care and concern for others. <clears throat> is there treatment? The best therapies for treating psychopathy are those that use many modalities. This means that treatment approaches need to incorporate numerous options 
including psychotherapy, development of behavioral skills, and the recognition of the important roles that family, school, peers, and the community play. Patients who do not react to other interventions are typically the only ones for whom medications are advised. This was psychopathy in a nutshell. As we had discussed earlier, people frequently confuse it with sociopathy. So let's look into oh. this entity in more detail. Okay, on to the next. Let's sociopathy. According to the Oxford Learner's Dictionary, a sociopath is a person who has a mental illness and who behaves in an aggressive or dangerous way towards other people. Okay. Are sociopaths made? The word sociopath is used when antisocial behavior is brought on by a brain injury or harmful sociocultural elements, such as parental neglect, peers who engage in criminal activity. Okay, so it sounds like psychopaths, that comes with, uh, that comes with being born with it. While sociopaths comes with damage to the brain? Belief systems and upbringing. They are majorly a product of their surrounding environment. Okay, yeah. They have little conscience. Sociopaths are not all cold-hearted like psychopaths. They do have the ability to feel remorse and guilt. And although empathy and guilt can exist in sociopaths, they usually lack the strength to override their impulsive and erratic conduct. Mm. Meanwhile, their connections might sometimes feel normal, at least with those they are close to. Okay. Highly impulsive. When a sociopath commits a crime, they may do so on the spur of the moment Yikes. and with little thought to the risks or repercussions of their choices. I know one person like that. They easily become agitated and angry, which could lead to violent outbursts on occasion. The likelihood of catching a sociopath rises as a result of these actions. Poor career life. Sociopaths are not usually in a position to keep their jobs. Jeez. They typically avoid attracting attention to themselves or interacting with coworkers. They prefer to work at the periphery of the society, like selling drugs, where they do not get to interact on a one-on-one -on -one basis with people for a long time. Mm. Is there treatment? Medication, counseling, or a combination of the two can be used to treat sociopathy. Still, it's crucial to remember that many sociopaths reject treatment because they don't think anything can be done to change their conduct. Cool. Some doctors do not advise these techniques to properly cure someone from sociopathy because the harsher medications could result in sociopathy being cured by masking symptoms and reverting to their old selves as soon as the medication is stopped. There are notable differences between the two disorders, psychopathy and sociopathy how they handle crime, how they are in their careers, and even what their social relationships are like. But we also see that their behaviors can overlap, making it hard to differentiate between the two disorders. And this overlap has caused problems for people over the years. In the childhood era, the two conditions are frequently labeled as conduct misbehavior, and hence, the two are used interchangeably. They also become different as time goes by. Here are some easy examples from the media. Jeffrey Dahmer, from the recent Netflix murder documentary, Woo! is a psychopath. Okay. He is very meticulous in his plans and is fascinated by death and blood. He has no remorse and lacks empathy. Okay. For sociopathy, a clear example is Tommy from the series Power. Tommy is very impulsive and lacks a plan while executing his crimes. And Jeez. he also feels some remorse when he goes too far. So, what was your favorite bit of information from today's video? Okay. Have you had to deal with real psychopaths or sociopaths? Okay. Okay. I'm starting to get it now. I'm starting to get it. That, that was a great. That was a great uh, comparison between Tommy and Jeffrey Dahmer. Because Jeffrey Dahmer, yo, the system just kept giving him leeway because it's like it's like you're giving people the okay to be how they are. And I get it that some of them are born with it, and other people are built that way it's just like it's so weird bro like it's sad to say it's hard to really fix those kind of problems considering that they're either born like that 
or they may not deserve to be there or who knows but it's so confusing with this world bro but uh, uh, the link to the link to the videos in the description down below. Super Black Finesse, we're out of here, man.